In Formula One, the Gilles Villeneuve circuit in Montreal is regarded as one of the very toughest for the brakes. At the end of the numerous fast straights, hard braking is required ahead of the tight corners, which puts the whole braking system under huge load. In Canada, Nico Rosberg and Michael Schumacher need to find one thing above all, the right rhythm. Yeah, the braking is quite sensitive. Um, you need to put a lot of feeling into it, get the timing right, release the brakes properly at, at the right amount as you're approaching the corner. So it's all quite, uh, quite difficult. A Formula One car has almost three times the air resistance of a road car. Just taking his foot off the gas subjects the driver to deceleration forces of 1G. When he hits the brakes, as here in Montreal ahead of the final turn, the speed drops by 185 km per hour. That releases a total energy of 2,522 kilowatts. A mighty 5.65G press the driver into the cockpit. More than on a roller coaster or in a rocket at takeoff. The braking is probably the most fascinating part of an F1 car because the deceleration is just absolutely amazing. And I think we measured it recently in the simulator that it took uh, a little over two seconds from 300 to zero which is an amazing deceleration and the forces are so high that probably if you wouldn't be used to driving an F1 car and you would get in, you wouldn't be able to hold your head during a braking event and you'd smack into the steering wheel. So uh, we have extremely strong muscles in the back of our neck to be able to support that. In purely engineering terms, Formula One brakes work just like those in a road car. The difference in power, however, is enormous. To slow from 100 km per hour to zero, a Formula One car requires just under 17 meters. In a road car, it's almost twice that far. For a Formula One car, one thing above all else has to be right, the brake balance. That's the distribution between braking force at front and rear for optimum stability. During the warm-up lap and the race itself, teams can react to this and optimize the balance. It's all about finding the right compromise. The brake system in some ways is more simple this year because we don't need some of the systems we had in the past to help control the braking system because the curse contributes to that now. Um, the grip under braking is different with these tyres. Um, uh, the grip initially is a bit less, but even if you lock them up, you can come off the tyre more easily. So the behaviour of this tyre under braking uh, is somewhat different than the Bridgestone tyre, and we're tuning the braking system uh, to suit that. The brakes on the Mercedes GPW02 are made of carbon, a material developed for aerospace technology. Extremely light, extremely tough, extremely expensive. A set of brakes costs around 6,000 euros. Over a season, around 50 sets are used per car. Total costs, therefore, around 600,000 euros per team. Carbon brakes need to perform at up to 1,200 degrees Celsius. At each Grand Prix, the brakes are heated up to 1,000 degrees 800 times. The cars go from 100 to 300 kilometers an hour in nine seconds, and all the way back down in two and a half. Braking F1 is very impressive. And for most people have been able to see live a Grand Prix and go to a corner that uh, you arrive high speed and have to go to, to low speed uh, in order to make your corner, it's uh, very impressive, it's uh, sensational, even for me. I mean, watching practice occasionally, I always choose to go to places like this because uh, if you watch there, you, you think it's impossible to make it and uh, yeah, the cars are able to do it. Especially in Canada, correct cooling of the brakes is invaluable. The air inlets are therefore usually bigger to ensure consistent braking performance over 70 laps. But the air resistance must also be kept as low as possible. In Montreal, it's not just about hitting the gas. 